Now, on the reversal side, in other words, let's say they do go to professional help. I think you mentioned Elite Care is one of the establishments you mentioned earlier. If they go there for help um, and they're there for 30 days, 60 days, whatever it may be, uh, does the prefrontal cortex come back? Is it, is it able to... Yeah, you know, it, yeah, definitely. That's the thing. Except for a few drugs that actually destroy brain cells, which marijuana has been linked to destroying brain cells. Methamphetamine marijuana. has been... Yes. And methamphetamine oh. has been linked to destroying brain cells as well. And there are some other, especially psychotropic medicines. Uh, I'm sorry, it's... it's um, um, antipsychotic, antipsychotic medication, a lot of times have what we call extrapyramidal effects. Big word. Uh, What's extrapyramidal? Extrapyramidal <laughs> effects are uh, very much um, something. For instance, a, a tick. Almost, it looks like a tick disorder, where basically people have lose control, voluntary control of, let's say, facial movements. Eye movements, you know, they start kind of blinking involuntarily or their their mouth, their lip area regions or stiffness in their body. There are a lot of different ones. We will go through them. But those are severe, long-lasting effects because of brain deterioration. Wow. So, so they'll have that tick forever. Forever, yes. They can get that forever. And wow. we'll talk about the details of that. But generally... Um, uh, brain damage, so you were talking about that, uh, except for these, and, and that has to come through prolonged use. It's not just like a one-time or one-month use. It's basically a few years. Once you go through a few years of, let's say, marijuana or methamphetamine or amphetamine or, uh, you know, um, antipsychotic drugs, then you see the effects and the long-lasting brain damage. But outside of those, you don't see long-lasting brain damage. Uh, let's say with a lot of antidepressant, anxiolytics, uh, with even opiates, the, the, the body is capable of not regenerating new neurons, but uh, kind of what we call neuroplasticity or rearranging the existing neurons to fulfill the same task that it used to. And, and also because there is no major brain damage or brain loss, it's the, the function, the functioning returns to that same brain region. The, the, you talked about That's prefrontal good. cortex that is responsible for the executive decision making. So the executive decision making under the influence of a drug is going to make wrong decisions, right? But when you take the drugs out, it's going to make right decisions. Right. So the system is there, the neurons are there, the neural pathways are there. It was just making the wrong decisions because of all the mental components, the dynamics of all these mental um, you know, uh, interactions that are going on, neuronal interactions that are going on. Mm -hmm. When this neuro neuronal network in our prefrontal cortex is messed up, it... it works according to a distorted sense of reality, then certainly the decisions are going to be faulty and the outcome is going to be faulty. But when you take the substances out and this neuronal system is interacting in a very logical, coherent, uh, realistic fashion, then the decisions are going to be correct and useful. I know people on the other side of that camera are, gonna, are looking at it going, wait a minute, what about marijuana? Uh -huh. It's been legalized in many states now. Yes. Yeah. So is it as bad? Not as bad as methamphetamine, but it is it is bad. How about medical marijuana? Well, medical marijuana, think about it. Somebody who is dying of cancer, right, has not as much to worry about about their mm. deterioration of their brain if they have been given two or three years to live. Because, again, when we're talking about brain cell damage, we're talking about a 10-year, 20-year well, type long. of a, yeah, very long, okay. prolonged use that starts after two or three years of the drug use. Yeah. But then the person would have to really continue the drug use for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years to ultimately end up with a completely dysfunctional brain, right? So, but then someone who has cancer, 
and has been given five years to live doesn't care about 20 years. But what about the 25-year-old who's got back pain, right? Falls yeah. off of whatever it is, skiing or something, hurts their back. Yeah. They get a doctor who's a little bit more um, liberal in the sense of giving the medication, yes. gives them the marijuana, and they're using this for now a period of a year mm -hmm. or two. Yeah. The back pain supposedly doesn't go away. Yeah. That can cause a problem, can it? It can. And it, it certainly does. You know, uh, marijuana affects concentration, attention, memory. Mm -hmm. Those for sure, for three major areas that are affected, it can lead to paranoia, right? It changes the diet of a person. And all of that in a very negative fashion for the sake of experiencing less pain, more or less. But interestingly, if you think about it, the marijuana doesn't reduce the actual back pain. You still have the same back pain, but you're more or less again grogged up to it. You are, oh. you are, you are in an emotional, mental coma toward the, the pain. The pain is there. You're just sensing it less. You care less about it because your brain has has been hijacked. Your emotional system has been encapsulated in a very coma state, like to be indifferent in a very coma state, like to be indifferent to the pain that is already there. That's what marijuana does.